three, two, one. Doing a bit of a different podcast here. So what are we up? What's up, Steve from Happy Pause DFW? What's up, Happy Pause? Um, are we live on the podcast right now? We are on okay, the podcast. Okay, we are live. As you guys can see, we are doing a different setup today for the podcast for the Ask the Pack Leader Show. Um, I wanted to come live and get questions in here from you guys. Uh, we do have – do we have other questions like ready for this or not? Yeah, we have okay. other questions, yeah. So we have other questions. I know yesterday I was live and in the comments there was a few um, questions uh, that I didn't get to on the podcast, but – if you have questions, definitely ask them here in the in the comments. And we're gonna I'm just gonna go straight to uh, a Q and A, I think, right? Is that what our plan is? Yeah. Let me see who else is in here. Is anybody saying hello? Nobody's saying hello. Everyone's joining but not saying hello. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, okay. Everyone's coming in, which is good. Okay. So guys, yeah, ask me questions for the Ask the Pack Leader podcast. We are literally filming this thing live. That's gonna this is the one that we uh, do on YouTube. So you guys can start asking questions in here. Sup guys. Ride the pack leader. What's up, man? Can everybody hear us okay on there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And by the way, let me know. Can you guys hear me? I don't even know. I, I know that you, you can hear, right? You, you should. Guys? Yeah, we should be. But right. I just want to make sure the live you guys are hearing um, the, the the questions or hearing me talk. Just to let me know in the in, in the things. Yes. Okay, good. Let's do a formal. Uh, what's okay, we'll, uh, do formal. we'll do the real stuff. Onto your show. main camera here. Onto the main camera. Okay. You guys can see the whole deal here. Ready? What's up, Pack? We are here for another episode of the Ask the Pack Leader Show. I was about to say Pack Leader Experience because I'm excited about it. Oh, that yeah, one. that's coming. We're doing another one, guys. It's coming up real soon, which is going to be the um, uh, Pack Leader Experience where we're going to bring on people who are pack leaders in their industries from all over the world, all different things, and it's going to be super cool. But today we're going to go straight to a Q&A, crystal clear. They can hear everything. So feel free to ask your questions here in the comments. Um, and if you guys see them back there too, any, any questions like, hey, check this one out, then, then we can do that. Everyone says they can hear me. So We, we just do a question right up, right up there. Huh? We just do a question right up okay. on there. And you're going to read it to me or how am I going to say I, that? I will definitely read it to you, but it shouldn't be delayed. What's delayed about it? What? What were you saying was delayed? No, the um, – uh, well, well, it's here. So when I ask I'm here to the live, yeah. like can you guys hear me? Usually they start telling me like 10, 15 seconds after I say it. But no, this is direct oh, because is. there, there, okay, there okay. is no marrying happening here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, but I think there is a delay from when I'm talking to this and the comments actually come actually on the live. Oh, it could be. This yeah. is us having our discussions of media and all that shit. Potentially, yeah. Okay. So you want to do that question up there and then we can go to here? Absolutely. Okay, so here we go. First question. Teddy the Cute Poodle asks, uh, Hi, Steve. You mentioned a couple weeks ago that dogs like to have a job. What are some examples of jobs I can give to my two-year-old high-energy dog? Okay, Thank so you. I just made a video about this, so this is perfect. So they're asking about like a job. Number, number one, to me, the number one job for a, for a dog is to follow its human, right? But what, fo what humans is following? So you better be a good leader for the dog to have a good life to follow a good leader, right? So to me, that's number one job. But other jobs can be carrying a backpack, like we're not carrying, but wearing a backpack, riding next to a bike, um, doing agility. These are all things that like that. And what is the individual dog? Is there a dog who's a German Shepherd who wants to herd? Then let's give them a job to herd, you know, like at times. But to me, like that's not totally realistic for everybody to be like, oh, I got to go fulfill my dog and let me go herd them. They get them herding sheep. So it really depends on on where you are. Uh, um, how your leadership is, how your dog is doing, um, what you have access to. But basic things I would say is number one is, is following human. Number two um, is, is – that's really like to me the biggest job for a dog, by the way, is just is, is to follow its human and, and have purpose. So if you, if you can provide a life where you're, where you're doing things and you have purpose, that's for humans too, by the way. It gets pretty awesome, life like that. Okay, let me go through here. Have you looked at any of these? This is the thing. Oh, here we go. Okay, so Jamie's I, looking through them right now. Okay. Um, versus in my home, sharing people who seems. Okay, this one says always hauling ink. My three-year-old Pikapoo. I don't know what the hell that is. Pekingese and a and a poodle. I'm a guess. This is all new shit. Uh, my three-year-old Pikapoo is aggressive to my new home. Peek that is sharing with someone. 
who has a same sex age peekaboo. Okay. Well, we got to know more about it. Let me know more about what's happening there. And I would have to see, see know more about your relationship. You know, these are ones that in the future too, we should bring these people on live. Just fucking if, if they're, you know what I mean? And just so I could just say like, and, and who, what's the relationship? Like the only thing that that is that might turn into like a, vi- like a video consultation. That's like one hour of, of figuring it out. So there, look, the same sex thing is one that, that, you know, no males can get together. No females can, can live together. Well, that's, that's a lot of these things come when you're, when you don't have leadership and you haven't established leadership in the home. Okay. So if you don't have leadership, then yes, two males could be potentially more of a problem than a male and a female. But then again, if you have the wrong energy dogs, a male and a female could be a big fucking problem. And then two males could be get along together. So there's so many other factors to it. We have to look, this is the thing that Caesar is trying to do. And I'm doing all the time too, is, is to get everybody to focus in the right spot. So they're focused on, Ooh, this is a dog. These, these dogs are the same sex. So that must be why they're fighting. Well, that's could be part of the whole thing. Or it could be a, a situation that you don't have leadership. The energies are incompatible. There's a million other things that are happening there. Your relationship with each dog is not as great as you thought it was. There's, the focus needs to be really on the human and their ability to lead and their um, what's going on with them in their life. Those things are what really matter. So that's one. Um, let's see this one. Dog trainer Johnny. What's up, Johnny boy? Um, if, there is any, if there is any people that you want to come on eventually, yeah. we'll just take note of that on, okay. on here. Okay, I am uh, I'm working with a working line GSD owner, wants to have a nice walk. My strategy is drain the energy and create understanding of leash pressure. Uh, but he protests big time. Any any other suggestions? You were about to say something? Yeah, I'm just pointing out how Jamie's on point with this. Is this the question he's asking right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're screenshotting all the messages? Good, good, good. Um, okay, Johnny, so let's see here. You have a working line draining shepherd. Nice. You want to go for it. The only one I'm going to have to walk. My strategy is drain the energy and then create understanding of leash pressure. Yep, but he protests big time. But protests what? Is he protesting leash pressure? That's normal. If he if he's never understood it, they're gonna. It's not that so much that they're pro- protesting it. Also, by the way, it, it it might be that they're he just doesn't understand leash pressure. And a lot of times, people are teaching dogs leash pressure the incorrect way. So meaning, like say this is the leash, right? They start pulling on the leash this way. And then the dog resists this way, and then they let the dog go that way. So the dog pulled that way, and then their pressure gets the human to to release and move that way, which is not what we want. We want to be able to pull this way, and the dog calmly comes this way. So hopefully that made sense. Um, but yeah, I think it's a good idea. Draining energy with a high-energy dog, for sure, to be able to um, have a more clear mind to work with. Let's put it that way. Or else they're, they're too pent up to be able to do anything. Um, she says, not sure. Just think it takes people a second to type. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. She was saying about like, that part the delay. Too. Yeah. yeah. Um, how to, in- all right. So this is from Emily Leo. I'm just going to read these. Um, how to introduce strangers to a reactive one-year-old border collie with a lot of fear, anxiety. He will typically bark, jump, and nip at new people. It's incredible. Should I put these as the pin? Should I pin these when I, when I put, when I'm answering If them? you would like to, cause, but it's on our screen here too. Okay. So that's that one. Um, I don't know what happened there. But we're learning. We're learning, people. Okay. Did I just miss this one? Oh, when I pin it, it takes it out. Yeah, so I wouldn't worry about pinning it so much because okay, it's so on the screen behind you. Shit, there we go. Okay, Emily Leo. Uh, how to introduce strangers to a reactive one-year-old border collie. With a lot of fear, anxiety, he will typically bark, jump, and nip at new when they enter the home. Okay, so we got to figure out what's going on in the relationship. It's obviously coming from a fear place or a guarding of the house place. Um, and we got to see where it's coming from with him. So some dogs are just are, are, are actually somewhat secure with, with defending the home and guarding it because they've just taken leadership or they're mentally. But for the most part, it's usually fear cases. It's usually insecure dogs um, who are taking control of the situation. So we have to understand why is the dog taking control of that situation? Is it because the relationship between you two is the dog sees you as follower and doesn't see you as leader? That could be a big factor. It's a huge factor. Um, is it one that the dog wasn't exposed to things? You know, it, 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 this, these, are, these are difficult, some of these questions, because it's, it's like, well, which dog and what is the situation? What have they been through? Did, was it abused? Was it not? Like... This is where sometimes I run into a little bit of an issue with these Q&As because it's like, my dog's aggressive. What do I do about it? Um, 
wow, like, where do I start? I need some time to understand that. So, but reality, I would be doing the basics. This is the, just without knowing your individual dog or you personally, I would be assessing the relationship. Does, do I, does this dog getting tremendous affection? Is he invading space? Is, do, does he listen to me seamlessly in the home? seamlessly on the walk is he really good with that stuff and the only area i have is he's unsure about people because to me you have an ex excitement issue too because he's going and charging people so he under so he's going into excitement also so we got to maybe potentially work on excitement so there's a lot of different things that could be happening there that are quiet that's me doing that to nico sorry if i got in your guys ear <laughs> he thinks he should be up here because he just thinks he should be up here i don't know why um Okay, next one. What's the best way to get experience working with dogs if you're interested in learning from if if you're interested in learning from you working with pack leader dogs as handler trainer? That's a good one. Well, you can let me know where you live. That's first of all, and then I could see if I know anybody in there. You can get the information from following the page to a T. Um, I give away a lot of information, so. I mean, there's videos, some of the videos are 20, 30 minutes long that have a lot of information in them. So those would be um, definitely ways. If you can find anybody in your area who understands leash handling, um, um, you know, even taking a go to a rescue go to a rescue and say, look, I'm just looking for a dog, like the easier dogs. And you watch my long line video and you go work long line with that shelter dog. I mean, you have free access and it's great for those dogs because they get out of the shelter and they get out of the rescue and they get to work and they get better with leash walking and all those type of things. So. Um, yeah, it's experience, experience, you listen, experience is two things. Like it, what kind of experience are you getting? So when I was like playing college baseball, I could have got experience, uh, in the backyard, just throwing the wrong way with bad mechanics, which I probably did by the way, which my arm kills me now, but that could be, uh, um, a way to what kind of experience are you getting? So if you've been doing it the wrong way, sometimes it really helps like the immersion is a great way to do it, by the way, it's an amazing thing, but you have to be able to immerse and have an understanding of what to do, how to do it. Um, and if you have someone who can mentor you or a trainer who can say, oh, let me show you this or let me show you that, that would be the way. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, for me, by the way, I started with walking dogs. I learned how to walk dogs. Leash handling is where it all begins. It's when, when, when whether a dog comes in with red zone aggression or whether a dog comes in with um, okay. fear, insecurity, excitement, and this, almost every single time we're starting with the leash walk. So getting really good with leash handling. And that's a real skill. And I'm talking about, I see a lot of trainers who don't have very good leash handling skills at all, but are training people how to walk dogs on a leash, which is whatever. But leash handling is a skill that is very important. Okay, uh, next one. So Browns B Liz, my dog get nervous, fearful around kids. How can we approach this or work on him not feeling so nervous around kids that are playing loud, jumping, basically just being kids okay so these are things like kids remember kids are going to be fast moving frantic excited they're sitting there and they just yell something out of nowhere so for nervous dogs insecure dogs dogs that are a little unsure about things or worse dogs who think they're leading their humans they're going to feel like they need to do something about it so my point is this is where leadership comes in let's just say the dog is just nervous about children okay and i'm nervous about children and here comes uh, the child comes into the picture, right? Hold on one second, guys. Live. Live, we have to deal with some dog stuff over here, so. No. That's Nico being Nico. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. You got to deal with that shit. All good. Yeah, you this have to. You got, like I did the live yesterday and I talked about how like, oh, this is perfect. This is a scenario of Nico's misbehaving or not doing what we're asking him to do and, and like doing it in a sloppy way that I was like, this is why I can get him off leash and all these things because of how disciplined I am when it comes to this stuff where as you can see, I'm live with all you guys. I'm do, filming a podcast. Jamie and Adam are here. There's a lot of shit going on, but that takes priority number one for me. It takes over everything. No offense to you guys, but... <laughs> He, I have to be able to go deal with him right in that moment where I told him once, you guys heard me tell him quiet, right? And he just said, well, that's fine, Steve. But for today, I'm just going to disregard you and keep, keep uh, whining in the kennel because I know you guys are up there and I should be up there with you. So I have to go now and do the second step where now I go and confront him and put a little bit more pressure on him to deal with him so he understands. Okay, so the kids. Remember, kids are, kids are yeah, exactly. So kids that are playing loud, jumping, those are things that I, what I would do with that is like find like a playground or something 
drain this dog significantly and then from a distance, from a, from a good distance where it's not overwhelming the dog or they're not getting all worried, be back there and let them observe. They need to be able to just be in the same room as dogs, right? I mean, I'm sorry, as the children. Not in the same room, the same vicinity first. So most people try to like, the, dog, the dog's not great with kids and then they have kids over to their one bedroom apartment and like this jam-packed little thing. And they're like, yeah, he's not doing well. Yeah, yeah I know. You're, you're in the freaking fire already there. So starting from a distance is a really good way to do that. Excuse me. Um, and making sure you drain them before you bring them there so the dog's not so wound up. I would be, again, you guys hear me saying the same thing, assessing the relationship. Because here's the big ticket item that most don't understand is that you need to be the leader to influence behavior. I mean, that's just how it fucking goes with dogs. So if I'm not the leader and I go down there right now and address Nico, he'll, he'll, he may growl at me. He may bark at me. He may continue whining right in my face and it won't change him at all. So that's why how important leadership is, because if I'm with the dog and I'm, and he understands my leadership, I can teach him that, Hey, lunging or barking or going crazy towards a child is not one of the options. And he says, well, what are my options? Well, one, you can move away from the kids who are jumping, right? And we don't want you to run away in flight, but you can avoid children. And I'll do my job as a leader. I won't let these kids just rush up and come touch you either because I know it makes you uncomfortable. And then I might be finding, do I have any friends or family who have a kid who listens? Good luck with that in 2021. But uh, <laughs> yeah, right. But um, Let's see if your kids listen. I'm just curious. Yeah, no, my kids will be the worst. <laughs> curious about that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so someone who could come and just like they could play like over somewhere else and and you're working with the dog and maybe you're doing some obedience work with them there and and keeping them redirected and, and working on some training and that stuff while the kids are around. But yeah, kids are a tough one. I and mean, to me, uh, to me, uh, you guys have been hearing me say it all the time when it comes to, you know, someone asked something yesterday about teaching an old dog new tricks. And I said, listen, you can 100 percent. You can totally rehab dogs that are adults that are not puppies anymore. But what I'm trying to get everyone to see is how freaking important the puppyhood thing is. And I, look, what I, don't take this the wrong way and think that like, oh, it's over now because my dog's not a puppy anymore. So I'll just wait to my next dog. No, you can do this shit right now. Dogs live in the moment and you can definitely get to a really good place with your dog, no matter how bad the issues are. But puppyhood, if you want like the most, like the best relationship, the best things to happen, puppyhood is where it's at. And that's where, and especially imprint, even when you're meeting a rescue dog, if you're doing a rescue dog, Eating a meeting a meeting a uh, a rescue or an adult. How do you imprint with that dog? So are you meeting that dog? Hi, puppy. Great to see you. Your first imprint is I represent excitement and softness because I want you to climb on my face. That's not me who says it, by the way. I wish it was the other way around. If people could just climb on the left puppies and do all that shit. I saw, I used to have I used to like laugh. I used to have dreams back in the day in the middle of the night that was in like a field and it was all puppies. And I was just like running around like this is the greatest thing of my life. There's puppies everywhere. I can and I can pet them and play with them and climb all over and all that. But it's not reality. That's why it was a dream. <laughs> so it's really I would, important. I would not expect you having that. Dream I know. Time. It's really important to to understand the um, the 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 puppyhood thing because that's where things are like the foundation is set that can go for life. So that's what I'm trying to push you guys into. Don't waste puppyhood. You see me saying it. Don't dump all this affection. Don't give them the free house. Uh, like free reign of the house. Don't give them their space, your intimate space, which is something that should be valued, should be sacred. It should be something that's earned for the dog to enter that space, right? Because if we just allow them to come and take it, then that could be an issue. I'm just going to move this light. If you don't mind. It's like, like right in my eye right here. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's one right there. Yeah. Is that going to like ruin the shot? No. It's okay. Right. Um, do you see that little question uh, box down there? Yep. Do you mind hitting that so we could check that question out? Hopefully this is not, what happened yesterday. Ho hopefully it's not anything crazy. Oh, so no, no questions come up. No, there's questions, but they're in, they're, they're, they're in white with a white background. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay, we won't do that. I took then. a screenshot of it yesterday. So sorry, guys, about this question box. I don't know if it's Instagram that's fucking that up or it's us or is what. Is it dark because it's on dark mode? That's, I don't know. I can't answer that question right now. That could be. I have no idea, though. We'll figure it out because, no, because yesterday I did it on, on my Samsung phone. And oh, it was, no. It was yeah. not dark mode. So right, right. We'll figure that one out, guys. Um, What's up, Danny, the dog trainer? What's up? Uh, I would love to. I would love to be live. This is my problem. I feel like I'm not leading correctly. Okay. Well, we'll take note of that. We can see why. We're just not capable of that one just yet, but we will get there. Um, <clears throat> I have a reactive Boston Terrier. Uh, this is Kr Dot Design. 
I have a reactive Boston Terrier, not aggressive, just overly excited to meet other dogs and people. Inside the house, she listens when I say down in the home, but she completely ignores me outside. Yeah, there's more distractions outside. So you're just, it's more of a challenge. So you just haven't got to that level where she, where she believes you out there. But what is she not listening to? I'm assuming that it's, it's, she gets, it's, it's what you're saying about the excitement towards other dogs. I would be saying how often is your dog around dogs in a calm way? So what happens a lot of times is people bring their dogs to daycare, which the daycares, in my opinion, for the most part, for the, not all, uh, but, but for the most part, they don't understand dog behavior and they put the dogs in the box, you know, whether that's a parking lot, a warehouse, uh, a room in an, an apartment complex, whatever it is in their own apartment, they put all the dogs in there. They let them run around, be excited and play the entire time, send them home. So the only experience the dog has around other dogs is excitement. Now, you start walking your dog down the street and then they see another dog. Well, their only experience with dogs is excitement, right? And then now they're going to say, well, dogs equal excitement. So here's a dog. So I need to start getting excited. So we start playing and doing our whole thing. But then the human says, well, no, no, no. We're doing the walk thing now. And the dogs are saying, what? Don't, I'm getting frustrated. I want to meet that dog. I want to go play with that dog and you're not letting me. So now I'm going to start growling and now I'm going to start barking and start getting real pulley and all that stuff. So I would see if there's... Um, if there's any dog park or daycare things that are happening, um, I would definitely be continuing to master things inside. Um, and yeah, those are the, that, that's like the big thing. Uh, and seeing if maybe you can bring the attention to you on the walk, even when dogs aren't there. Cause sometimes people just walk and they're not really like there's, there's, they're not doing anything engaging with the dog. Like they're just walking, uh, just walking. And the dog's like, you're boring. And then all of a sudden anything else, it's like, oh, I see this thing. Or, or the person's on their phone or they're just doing whatever the fuck. And then they see another dog or they see a cat or they see a person or they see whatever. And the dog's like, oh, this is much more engaging. I can go see that. And then they want to go to it. And the human's holding them back with all this leash tension because they're not doing good leash pressure. And then it comes down to the relationship in the home when the dog is the leader and the human's the follower. And then you can see how all this shit unravels, right? So these are all the things that I'd be checking uh, to see, like check off all these kind of boxes. And maybe another thing too, if, the, if there's anybody in your area who does pack walk and, and, or does like a group meetup walk, that's a great way to get the dogs together and then go for a journey together, a calm follower journey together, as opposed to um, just going in a box and playing excited. You know, it's a bit, it's an important one. So when we do the dog park here, we're working the dogs doing structure stuff like walks and bike rides and all the good stuff. Uh, treadmill everything and then we go bring them to the dog park and then they run for a little bit they have their excitement and if it goes too long then we succumb them but a lot of times they're already fatigued and they they, they regulate themselves so we're setting them up for success and then they regulate themselves there's been some videos i'm sure you guys see when i'm in the dog park and i'm not telling the dogs to do shit and all of a sudden you see like seven of them just laying down like together just chilling you know that's the way it should be that's the way a group should be together not just uh you know, fist pumping in the fucking club for the, for eight hours straight. And then wondering, I wonder why he's so excited. Mm. We, we, we probably know why. <laughs> so I don't even know, by the way, if that's what your, happens with your dog. But again, these are things that you guys can send me video and I could tell you what's happening. I might need some background, uh, other stuff, but that's important. Um, what's the best strategy for helping her calm down outside? That's the same person. So we got to see what's happening there. So you can send some video. These are ones too. maybe we could revisit. When they, if they sent the video, like, so yeah. last week we talked about this one and now we have some context. She said, this happens, this yeah. happens, this happens. And here's a video of it. Yeah. If you do, if you do end up sending a video, just tag us, um, or, or let us know like that you were asking it on the podcast and then we'll, we'll revisit it. Yeah. Some way. So we know that it was there. Yeah. Okay. Um, always hauling ink. I need, uh, your help in, I moved from Colorado to VA, Virginia, I'm assuming. Yep. Having to live with my daughter for a short period of time, I have spoiled her and I need to be trained to train her. So train your daughter, are you asking? Uh, that's, I mean, I can probably help you with that, to be honest, but, <laughs> but I don't know what, what so I'm moving, having to live with my new daughter, well, no, not my new daughter, my daughter for a short period of <laughs> time, I have spoiled her and I need to, I'm a little confused by that one. Did you see that one? Yeah, it's okay. Oh, you see it? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think she means? She's a dog, though. Like she means a dog, right? Like she's got a dog, and they spoil. The, the, I have spo whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's asking. Um, it was living with a daughter. Yeah. And now it's like, short period of time. I have spoiled her. So yeah, the dog. The dog is essentially spoiled. Mm. 
I have spoiled. So it's a spoiled dog that has to go live with the daughter? It was it? living with the daughter. No, I think she's going and to live with the daughter. Yeah. If you can clarify that one so we can understand, because I want to go on a whole thing, and it's like, oh, I wasn't even talking about that. So here we go. Um, uh, okay, this is the one that jo- the uh, dog trainer Johnny said to clarify. He said, not so much with the leash pressure, just walking. This is the one he was protesting, the German Shepherd, the working dog. He jumps up at the handler and protests just walking. I, that's not so much protest. He just might be bored as fuck. Just so you know, right? Uh, yeah, there you go. He seems bored. Yeah, thanks for your answer. You might need to do something else with him. You might need to go work with this dog before a walk. So, so yeah, okay. This is another one. You guys have working dogs. You you have to be able to challenge these dogs and work these work them. Like we were saying about giving jobs and stuff and being a follower. Yes, but work them in like with Nico, for instance. Today you heard him whining and stuff. He already got Adam took him for a bike ride today. I didn't even take him. Adam took him for a bike ride today. Played play ball, ball, yeah. Played ball with him outside. Did a whole thing with him, and he was still like kind of whiny, still wanting to do shit. So it's just another level that they are that we have to pr- provide. But remember, you guys are the ones taking these dogs into your home. That German Shepherd didn't say, "I want to go to Steve and I select him." It's not the way it goes. He selected. I mean, we selected that. So now it's my responsibility to take care of that shit. So I got a working dog. I got to fulfill them more than the average dog, period. So they might have to do some, um, you know, certain things before going to the walk, take the dog for a bike ride, do other stuff. That's more vigorous for a, for a, for a working breed dog. You know, this is like you can look at sport dog stuff, too, and do some sport work with this dog. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool things you could definitely do. But I would do something before the walk is what I'm saying. Or else you're just going to be fighting with a dog who... It's like, I want more, I want more. And you're saying, I want you to do less, I want you to do less. But you haven't given him the more already. You see what I'm saying? So I want to fulfill that part. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, okay. The next one is Meg, Meg Shan 2. My dog Bowie will be sitting calmly next to me, and then he will start biting my arm and crying. Uh, I'm not sure what he's trying to tell me. I have redirected to a bone, and it has worked some of the time. Well, maybe just not have him in your space as much. That's one, that's one option of why is he, um, if he's doing that stuff, invade in, in, uh, in your intimate space and right next to you, maybe he shouldn't belong there. Cause we're, we, maybe we've set up the scenario where he believes that he's entitled. Cause by the way, this is one thing that you see children nowadays and, and sometimes Americans are, uh, a little bit entitled and feeling they just deserve. Right. So you could be creating some entitlement with your dog by have giving so much freedom and saying, yeah, you just belong next to me. And then he's doing that. That's one that I would like to see video. Cause when you say biting, is he just like nibbling on you or just putting his mouth on you? Or is he like fucking nailing you with a bite? Like, and crying. So there's anxiety. He might be bored. Um, he could have something medical going on. There's a lot of different things that it could be, but, uh, removing that stuff away, I would say the best thing to do would be to start practicing some distance stuff. Because look, a lot of times what people do is they don't allow a dog to stay. They they allow the dog to invade their intimate space. So they, the dog takes the intimate space. And then they ask the dog to now detach and go into public. So it goes, it's, it's intimate, personal, social, public. And public is like total detachment, far away thing, right? So humans are skipping these middle steps. So they allow intimate space in the home and then they try to do this big detachment. And the dog's like, I can't handle that shit. It's, I'm beyond threshold. It's too much for me. I can't fucking handle this. And you haven't exercised me enough. So I need something else. I don't know. It's making me anxious or there's a, there's a lot of th- things that it could be. But the first thing I would say is to, is to see, is there something medical going on? That's what I always recommend to check. If not, then start with practicing, like keeping the dog at a distance and that should help. Okay, next, uh, my pup has IVDD. I don't know what that is. What's that? Anyone know? Um, how can I control him on a leash without a slip lead? IVDD. Let's look it up. I'm Ooh. not a vet. So look at, look. hey, vets, take a, take a little note here. See, it's something medical, and I'm not just advising on it. I'm, I'm understanding it first. This is what the vets do. The vets are unfortunately doing a lot of behavior advice, and they don't really understand behavior. But they, they should admit that they don't. Oh, I see. It's like some, um, um, like a spine issue. So I'm assuming that that means you can't put anything on the neck. I would assume. Um, oh shit, what happened here? How can they control them without a slip leash? Well, if you can't put anything on the neck, then obviously your options are are, are a slip lead. I mean, I'm sorry, not a slip lead. Uh, a harness. Yeah. But what about potentially like a vibrate collar, where you could you could pair. Um, the, the pressure of the harness with the vibration potentially. So you could teach 
that's a little bit complicated to do. And I actually had a dog years ago who had a situation. They had a, it was a bull, English bulldog who had a tumor on on somewhere on the neck or whatever or something that we put a, a vibrate collar like away from it. I forget if it was up top or lower. And then with the leash pressure, we paired vibration because the dog was terrible with the leash pressure on a, on a harness. So that's something that's possible is you do harness paired with like an e-collar or vibrate collar, but it's got to be done the correct way of introducing it so the dog understands what it's supposed to do with that low level sensation. So hopefully that made sense. My nine month old GS lab struggles. This is uh sorry, this is um, Seagull Robin, I'm assuming. Uh, my nine month, uh, my nine month old GS lab struggles meeting other puppies, his age, uh, great to meet really young puppies and adult dogs seems to challenge other puppies, his age only. It's an immediate reaction. Yeah. I mean, look in the nine month zone, you might have a lot of dogs who aren't neutered yet, who are in their adolescent, who are sloppy, who are excited, who are kind of, like, look, it's a 16 year old, really like it's an adolescent, you know? So Adolescents sometimes um, are a little bit crazy. I know I was, you know? <laughs> so that can be one where in that zone of dogs, and by the way, that's six months to a year and a half is where most dogs go to shelters. Most dogs get sent back to rescue. Most dogs get returned to the breeder. Six months to a year and a half. Why? People fuck it up for the first four months, and then six months to a year and a half, depending on the dog's maturity and when it starts happening, it starts being more serious about its behaviors. Um, it changes, you know? Were you, are you this, let me ask you, are you the same as you were when you were 15 versus let's just say 35 or 55 or 70 you know, people change, like things change. So the relationship's going to change also as the dog matures and develops, but yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, and if it's doing with no puppies and no adults and just dogs his age there, it's not, it's not like he's saying, I don't like adolescents just so you know, it's a, it, there's a reason for it. So it could be, um, just that the, the it's, it's likely the energy of the other dogs that are now relating to a similar thing and creating association. So we'd have to see where it's coming from. That's the biggest thing is finding out why it's coming from. What about those dogs? So instead of focusing so much on the age, I would focus on what are the dogs like? Like meaning, what do they feel like? What is their energy like? That's what I would be focused on. Um, what's your thought process of uh, continual pacing even after exercise post three mile run? Because that's anxiety. If the dog's actually physically tired, um, then that's anxiety. So that's the body is wanting to. So I actually have to do that with Nico, believe it or not. So he, even though I've raised them with the calmness and this and that, he's a working breed dog. So it, they can almost want, they can almost be forced to be on when they don't want to be on. So meaning the, the, they, they might, the body may be saying, I'm tired. I want to rest. I want to lay down. But the mind is saying, no, no, no. The humans in your life told us we need to be excited all the time. We need to be in their space all the time. We need to be doing something at all times because if you go around, that's what people are doing nowadays. They're always involved in something. Media, they, they got to do something always. So the anxiety is there. So you have body saying rest, mind saying no, get excited, do something. So that's probably what the pacing is all about where that's one where I would bring some sort of duration um, exercise where I would maybe have the leash. I would interrupt the dog pacing. No, no settle them, put the leash on, and then I would bring them to a dog bed and say, you need to stay there. And they're going to probably try to get off, try to get off, but maybe you work the place command or the, or the, the bed command separate from that and then fulfill the dog that way. So that's important because you have to interrupt that. Okay, give you an example. I had a dog years ago. The lady would run uh, anywhere from five to 10 miles a day with the dog. Run, like, like good jog, like run, do a good run, five, 10 miles, come back. The dog would go ballistic in the apartment, running on the couches, trashing shit, this and that, all this stuff. So I said, and what does he do after that? She's like, oh, he passes out. I'm like, okay, so this is not so much of a, uh, of he's not fulfilled physically. It's that the mind is not learning to settle. So what we did was instead, instead of, uh, I saw what she did when she would enter her apartment building, she would take the leash off. We're home, run to the door, open the door, run around the house and then settle. So instead I said, let's leave the leash on and settle at all the doorways and then come in. And when we came in, he was like getting ready to do his thing. And we said, no, settle, go to your bed and wait there, which was hard for him in the beginning, but we worked through it. It's going to take time and don't give up on it. You got to be able to continue it and keep fulfilling it, right? Keep practicing. So when the dog's getting off, that's where most people are like, oh, it's not working. Well, it's not working yet. You got to like, that's like me. Like if, if, if tomorrow I started like for the first time ever, like lift a weight and I'm like, oh, I'm not jacked. I got to stop lifting. It takes time. 
the same thing. The, the fitness and nutrition thing and, and developing stuff with a dog is very similar. You know, it's a, it really takes a lot of work and discipline and, and that stuff. So yeah, that's what I would focus on is maybe see is interrupting the pacing, but interrupt it. So instead of this, this is, this is a key point though. The dog's pacing instead of what most people do is they go, they go, go lay down or get outside, but they didn't settle the dog down from the, from the actual pacing thing. So when he's pacing, you have to go over there and address him there, settle him down. No, relax. And then now we're going to leave there and then go to your bed. That's a very critical part of it too. So super important to do that part. Okay. Um, Danny, the dog trainer. Just let me know on time and stuff too, how we're doing. I don't know. Like I, the, the, cool. these things, the, I, yesterday I was saying like, I was like quick fucking Q and a on Sunday. And it was like, I think like one hour long. So Jamie, I think he's getting tired because it's only, get it's, tired. Only, it's only 35 minutes in and he's like, Hey, let me know. I just want to know on time what's going on here. Cause I'm doing rapid. <laughs> yeah, fucking it, fire. It, it is fast. And the thing is, is like, we're only like halfway on our average, yeah. which is an hour. Yeah. Does it, it feels like you answered a lot already. Yeah, because usually I'm bullshitting for the first 35 for sure. minutes. So we're in 35 so this minutes. This is good. We're getting, getting right to it, everybody. Yeah. And you if you wanted like to, this. we can end the, the Instagram and you can kind of like, you know, elaborate more or, yeah. or just nah, kind of do your own I think talk. this is good so far. Like I'm enjoying like these questions. Yeah. Um, Danny, the dog trainer, what are your suggestions for leash reactive towards other dogs when you don't have a balanced dog to use as a training tool? Have you ever used a life-size stuffed dog as a training tool? That's hilarious. We just got one. You want to see it? Yeah. Um, the answer to that is no, but I have not, but we just got this thing. Look at this. Just came in the mail. Okay. Ooh, watch out. Hey, shh. Easy, easy. No, we just got this thing so I can it's show so you guys without <laughs> a dog who's like, Nico doesn't want to come up. And he, I can be like, all right, so this is how you do the figure eight. This is how you touch. This part of the body is a good part to touch or this or that, or we're going to move them this way. So I can show you guys that. But yeah, I've seen the, the, the trainers who bring these fake dogs in. And a, a, a good thing for that, the re- the, really the only reason that I would ever use that is to see how bad aggression really is. So if a dog is going to go and attack a standing stuffed animal that just even looks like a dog, you know the aggression is really bad. Um, so that's like kind of what I would use that for. But now because, I mean, you can do that, but the dog's going to realize eventually once it uses his nose, this thing's not real. It's a stuffed thing. So then you're going to actually have to need a real dog. Uh, do you suggest anyone in northern New Jersey area to work under slash learn under? As Emily had asked, I live in Essex County. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is the, we're looking for people, but I just don't know the experience level. So look, if, if uh, what I'll tell you too, is I'm looking for experienced people, but it's not a requirement. So to me, what's more important is the energy of the person, their motivation, their values, um, their care for animals, their, their ambition, their, how, how much they want to help change the world. Um, work in something where they can progress and build a career in if you have a good and really it's just having a good attitude so if people have a good attitude and they have um they've at least been around dogs and aren't terrified of dogs there's things that i can teach but i'm definitely looking for people with a little experience of handling dogs um just because we, it's it's starting from the basics takes some time for sure um, whereas if you've had a bunch of experience, I can, you, you understand them to a degree where I can point you in the right direction. So that's possible, but you know, let me know. Okay. My, I think this is the same person. My pup has, this is Nikki Johnson. My pup has IVDD. We just said that and has to have a harness. This encourages pulling. Correct. How do I gain control with the harness? So hopefully that made sense. What I was saying about uh, possibly bringing in a uh, vibrator e collar to pair with that. That's what I, I mean. That would be something that I would be thinking about. I actually did um, a bunch of e collar work with a dog who was blind and deaf, and I actually really helped them by using leash pressure, of showing them with that collar where it should move and do. So that was uh, uh, something that really works. But you need somebody who really understands that tool because if they don't understand how to use a tool properly, it can create a lot of confusion in a dog. And my recommendation is anyone who's going to use an e collar is you got to read about it. And I would still recommend hiring a professional to show you because that's a tool that's powerful that can go wrong pretty quickly. This is rapid fucking fire, bro. Okay. Uh, Six month old black lab mix, great pup, still learning, but I lose his attention quickly due to people walking by, other dogs. 
Is it just a puppy curiosity thing or poor leadership by me? Uh, combo, but it's also a young dog, right? So the, the, the cu- puppy curiosity is always going to be there. They're always going to be curious about people, right? So it's one where we got to figure out how to get your dog engaged. And those are things that are, I also recommend doing walking. If you can go to like a park and all right. So something I also do with Nico is I'll take like the ball or something. And before I just start playing ball with him, I make him do shit. So I'll be like, all right, I want you to do it. I call it here, but it means walk right next to me. You guys see me doing it. I do that for a little bit. And then I have the ball. He's engaged. I'm going, good boy. Or, or you could bring the word that you want right there, which is here for me here. And that means stay right here. You could say heal. You could say whatever. Um, some people say the look at me thing that's done very poorly how you, usually people do it, but Yeah, you want to be able to create the attention because he's obviously getting excited about other things. So then I would also be saying, are people in his life giving him a ton of affection uh, while he's excited? So are you coming home and, hey, buddy, good to see you? And are you encouraging excitement? Are you nurturing excitement? And are your guests who come over and friends who come over nurturing excitement? Because if they're doing it, he's going to be looking for it. They become almost like um, like drunk on the affection thing. You know what I mean? They're obsessed. It's like, I want to know, like alcoholics for, for, for affection. So then they're looking for anybody. It's like, they're like, oh, will you give me affection? Will you give me, I'm obs- I just need affection. It's, but it's become excessive and it's unnecessary a lot of the time. Okay. Emmy Glee. My aunt is coming to visit her uh, elderly, very small dog. She doesn't want to board her because she has health issues like blindness, etc. We have a one-year-old pit next best way to introduce them. I don't really know the dogs. So there's a blog on my website on packleaderdogs.com. If you go to packleaderdogs.com and click the blog area, I haven't put a blog in there in forever because I basically do a fucking blog every Instagram post that we do. Yeah, for real. But, but there's one that I did years ago about meeting a dog the right way and was specifically for this situation. So you can see what we do. But to summarize... It's basically one of both sides drain their dogs. Both sides ideally have leadership with their, with their, uh, with their dogs. Um, and then when they meet, they don't just do this face-to-face meeting or stick them in a backyard. Instead, we meet at a distance and we join together for a walk. So the humans come together and we walk together. The dogs are on the outside first. And you may not even have these dogs actually, actually physically smell and meet each other yet. You know, it might be straight structure. So when, I first, when Cassie first uh, moved in with me, when we had Maddie and Jake... We obviously Jake had already been here for rehab and stuff, but with us in the home, when we were inside the house, we didn't have them just loose free running around when we, we would work them outside and then inside the home, they would go to their beds. So when we would have them in the same room and stuff, go to your beds and this is where you guys stay. And then as time goes on, we started loosening up the restrictions a little bit and getting them closer and doing stuff together, more outdoor stuff. So then they got into the relationship. But what I would tell you is, is, is so important. Like I said before, is do you have leadership? Because if you don't have leadership, you can't influence so the dogs are going to figure it out themselves by figuring it out might mean trying to kill each other. That's the only issue. You know what I'm saying? So I, I would, you know, a lot of people are trying to do this stuff. Like, let's get our kids together. But they, they have, like, no leadership with their kids. And the kids get together and start acting a fool and they don't know what to do. And, like, they're following bad, bad advice. They're following kids who are getting into trouble and all that kind of crap, too. So I think it's really important. I mean, it is. To be able to influence and change behavior or influence a dog to do something you got to have leadership so this is why you may have heard me talk about leadership before i don't know once or twice but once maybe i think maybe two times ever i talked probably about it. <laughs> i named the fucking company after it <laughs> um, thank you for all your wonderful content learning so many great things from you awesome that's the goal Remember, I'm here for you guys because this is yes it's my life and the business and my passion and all that but i'm also here for for dogs overall and really for humans overall because this stuff that you're going to apply and do with your dog is going to make you feel better as a human period i just realized too i'm like never looking at that camera that might look pretty weird on the it's podcast pretty rude of you by the way yeah i know sorry guys i was gonna I tell you about it but honestly it's all good okay you're, you'll learn for the i'm next trying ones. to yeah, yeah do both okay um any t- so the next one is Susie's pet services any tips when dealing with separation anxiety in older dogs my nine my nine-year-old maltese Pee inside the crate when left alone. We just start crate training three months ago. And she's nine. Okay. Yeah. That's one where you 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 look, crate training is crate training. The way I see it, yes, it's gonna be harder with an older dog who's already um been imprinted in a certain way and has its conditioning and its associations and all that stuff, but it's really going down to basics. So the biggest key about yeah, it's your peas in there and stuff like that, but the biggest key is 
am I draining this dog enough prior to putting him there so it makes sense? And you might have to go excessive with that because to a normal dog, like, for, okay, for Nico, when he's pretty tired, go to your bed and lay down and he'll sleep. Like, there's not, and we can leave and it's not an issue, right? But if his whole life he's spent on the couch pacing, whining, and freaking out for nine years, and then now I'm going to do create training, it's going to, there's going to be a little bit of mess. And I, I talked about this on the podcast too, where I'm doing rehab with the dog. It's like basically like a three phase thing. First is the bad habit destruction. Then comes the confusion phase where the, where the dog's learning new stuff, learning new behaviors, but still being influenced by its old association and conditioning. But that confusing phase is a lot of times, which is what the dog's going through with you right there, is a lot of times when people give up. Oh, it's not working. Well, it's not working yet. And most humans in 2021 aren't patient, aren't good with follow through, and are looking for the quick result thanks to this thing. Uh, I just posted something. I want my likes. I just ordered the Amazon. I want it delivered same day. You know what I mean? Like that, that kind of thing. I, I'm ready to watch TV. I want my DVR ready now. It's like waiting for any, I mean, you go to a store and uh, what? There's three people online for coffee. This is terrible. I can't handle it. No, it's slash me in California when I try to get coffee. That's what it's like. Um, back in the day or shop, right? Yeah. <laughs> shop is another, yeah. Um, so yeah, I would be focused on making sure the dog's drained, making sure you're, you're re- look, and remember are uh, you giving a ton of affection too? Is this dog still, if the dog is spending a ton of uh, time in your intimate space and has been for nine years and you're still doing it, but then trying to just put it in that kennel, then they might have issues with the separation, right? And if the dog's peeing in there, and all, it's, it's, it's due to the anxiety likely. So just make sure this dog is, is fatigued so it makes sense. Because you, you have to get to a point where the body is going to override the anxious brain. Because the brain's saying go to the body, get up, bark, move, try to break out of the kennel. We can't sit still, all that. It's when the body finally says, brain, shut the, it's enough. I'm exhausted. I need to rest. And the brain finally says, oh, okay, fine. And then that's the moment you come back home and let him out of the kennel, right? So you can do short experience. And by the way, do some of the kennel while, while you're home with that dog too. You can keep the dog like start working the crate while you're there. And the dog starts, let's just say, whining and barking in there. No. You have to be firmly tell them no. You can ignore also, but you know, every dog is different. And by the way, humans, you're allowed to say no to your dog. Just make sure you're doing it in a calm, confident way and following through. Okay, draining a dog's energy versus creating a marathon dog athlete. Correct. That's, okay, Zach, that's limitations, right? So that's a very good question, and a lot of people don't understand that part is they say, okay, Steve, I got it, so I'm going to drain my dog. And then they focus on um, be, making the dog a CrossFit athlete. We actually had a dog like that back in the day who was like, the, the people took my advice on working the dog, but it was like, Overboard. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. And it's like the dog became an adrenaline freaking junkie athlete dog that like it was developing anxiety even at high levels of exercise. So it's a great one, which is it's very important to put limitations on things. So draining energy. So people focus on, you know, this is a great point too. Where people talk about the walk, right? So people talk about a walk and they say, I got to get, I got to get this dog for a walk because I got to drain them. And they're thinking physically, I got to drain this dog. I got to drain the dog physically, physically, physically. So they just go and do it, go and do it. And they come home and the dog's in the house going around. Oh, it needs more energy. So let's put him on the treadmill. Let's put him in the backyard. Let's do more. Let's do more. Let's do more. Where what we were saying before is bring a certain amount of energy and then practice calming exercises, calming drills. So that's what we do. Like after I do something with Nico, he might spend, spend two hours in his kennel. He might have to go to his place and lay down for an hour. Um, he may not allowed to come outside with me in the backyard and has to stay inside after he's been in work already. So putting limitations on, rules manage limitations, that's the limitation part of um, putting limits on the dog, um, continuing with that excitement and stuff inside the house, you know? And another thing too is like, when I'm playing games with Nico too, I do spend, you know, it's not just throw, 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 game over. I throw, 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 then make them do like a heel thing. Then I'll make them wait and then I throw it. Then I make them wait and then I hide it. Then we just stop for a while when he's getting tired and I'll pet him and we spend a little time like that. Then we might take a break and he goes, lays on the hot tub thing. You guys could watch the live yesterday and see what I mean. Goes on the hot tub. Then we come back and play a little bit more. You know, so it's like that stuff. I'm working them through it. But but I'm again, what the reason why most people form this marathon athlete is because they're focused on the body more than the mind. I focus primarily on the mind and then using the body to influence the mind. Hopefully that made sense. Um, 
Let's see. Calm, balanced dogs. Observation before affection. Yeah. Assess and evaluate. Yes, exactly. So that's a good point. And, and here, they wrote something else here too. Um, I work mostly with rescue dogs. Excuse me. I don't feel sorry for them. Excellent. I do very little talking. Excellent. I observe their behavior and get a better idea of who they are. Very little talking. That's it. I mean, that's a good way to do it. It's so important, right? So when I come, people are, you know, this is a funny one. Sometimes like people will come for an assessment, right? For their dog. And I come out and I just stop at a distance or I'm looking out the window to see what's going on with that dog first. So I'm, I'm like in straight assess and evaluate mode. There's not a thought in my mind that's saying, when do I get to pet that dog? You know, most people are saying, oh my God, look at the dog. I'm going to go pet it right away. They don't even think. That's why so many bites happen. People reach in or they don't see the signs. They don't see the signs of what's coming of why this dog is about to bite or could bite or is, is unsure or is nervous or is territorial or there's a million things happening there. So, so important to assess and evaluate, but then you have to understand dog psychology so you know what you're looking for. So when that dog's like giving you that side eye thing like that, it's warning. So you have to understand, don't reach for that dog. Don't talk to them there. Don't try to pet them there. Don't try to give them a kisses and all that shit or give them food. They don't want it. They don't want, they want you. They're warning you and saying, stay away. So, you know, we have to understand them first. Assessing and evaluating first from a distance. I, I, I Look, for me, if I can, you heard me talk about public, social, personal, and intimate space. I'm trying to assess and evaluate from public from the beginning before I even go to social, to personal, to intimate space. I'm far away. I'm like, let me see what's happening there and let me, let me see what, come up with a strategy and a game plan based on, ah, this is a nervous dog. The owner is insecure or whatever it is. I got to see what's happening there so I know how I can come up with a strategy, what's going to be best for that scenario. And another thing too is working with dogs is how much that people don't talk enough about is creativity. Being creative, being like, and, and, and being able to adapt and pivot in a split second when something's not working. And uh, if I could, you know what? I think I need to just get this dog on this, on this table. Cause then I can get him from this to that, to that table. Or, you know, it's like that creativity. This is why I love what I do so much is every case is different. The dog is different. The humans are different. So it's like, how do I put this puzzle together? And that's for me as a person, like what I love so much. Okay. Um, check out Teresa Paulo for how dog daycare Teresa Apollo. It sounds so freaking familiar. Check out Teresa Apollo for a uh, how dog daycare. She's in it. I don't know what that means, but I feel like I've, I like, I've heard that person before. Um, okay. Let's see. Liz, Liz Eb, Eberhart, Eberhart says for six month old black lab that I lose attention to, he doesn't, pull or bark on leash or get excited he just blatantly ignores me i want him to i want him to play and get his energy out but he'd rather look around but on leash so six months on black lab and lose attention to he doesn't pull or bark on leash i guess he's off leash you're saying so that's you got to create a game with him you have a retriever so you got to do retrieving games with him um and get him engaged he, he may not understand the ball game he may not understand the game but there's a way to teach that game. You could do with like a long line and a ball, just toss the ball and meet the dog. There's a whole thing. I'm going to do a video on, on how to play with your dog too. That's like an important one. But just, yeah, go play with the dog. But how? Like most people don't even know how to play with the dog. So I'll do a video on that, on how I play with Nico and how I get got him engaged with the ball. Because I was like thinking, I was like, when I got Nico, I was like, how did I get her so engaged with the ball? Because she's not a retriever. She was American Bulldog. And I was like, with Maddie, you mean? With Maddie yeah. yeah. And then I was like, how did I get her Maddie done? And I was like, when I get Nico, I'm like, how am I going to get him engaged with the ball? And then I just, I don't even remember, honestly, how I, I just more of like creating. And remember, I'm enthusiastic. That's a good one to think about, Liz, is are you enthusiastic or are you boring when you're going to try to play with your dog? Make yourself fun. Run away from your dog. Get him to chase you. Chase your dog. Don't be a bore. You know, <laughs> like. It's, it's true though. Like I talked about the walk too. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you can be calm, but you can also be feeling in a good way. You know what I mean? Like feeling like, I like the dog wants, I, I like being with this person. Cause I always say like, if you wanted to go uh, for a walk with a friend and the friend, you go for the walk and they're just like, mm. yeah, for real. And they're just on their phone the whole time. It's like, so how's everything going? The, 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 the person's looking, the dog's looking up. It's not enjoyable. And then the human's not even paying attention. It's like, anyway, I got work <laughs> on right now. The dog's like, fuck off. I'm going somewhere else. You're boring. And by the way, in the house, all you do is pet me all day. And like, give me this surface level thing. So I'm interested in other shit now, you know? Yep. You don't really do anything else with me like that. 
Got the team in here from Daniela. Good. I hope you're working. Is she working today? No. Okay, good. All right, Daniela. You're, you got to pass. <laughs> what do you guys do? You better be working. Be working she's, at, she's at home. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, that's her third content comment. I don't know what that means. Um, Martin, Martin, Martindale Kennels. I emailed you a video and would love your feedback on my two large dogs who play rough together. Thank you for all you do and how you, okay, I'll look for that, uh, that video. We'll see what's going on there. But again, like to give you that one, if the dogs are playing very rough together and I haven't seen the video yet, so I don't know your dogs. I'm just talking in general. That's one where I would say to be focused on what do you need? I don't know. Martindale Kennels. Somebody else? Okay. It's Cassie came from the, from the, Cassie came from the, uh, the luxury boxes down there to add. To from the down anything. yonder. Yeah. From the, from the stadium seating. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So, um, but that's one where, where if the dogs are playing so rough and so intense, you may want to do something else with them more to drain some energy and then bring them to the game and play. And then sometimes when you're pl- when they're playing, what we do in the dog park is from zero to 10. When the dogs get to this five zone and start going above and the intensity starts happening where they start competing more and start really challenging each other and that stuff. So when that starts to begin, I stop them. So I, that, that might take actually coming all the way up to the dogs, con- separ- calmly separating them, settling them down, get, making sure you achieve calmness, not just sit, right? Most people are focused on, oh, I got to make my dog sit or down or stay or heel. Okay, well, what's, what mindset? That's what I need to know. Mindset first. Give me the dog who's standing on two two paw two legs up in the air who's calm versus the dog who's laying down who is excited as all fuck you know um always holding ings question about the two female peekaboos ah okay i see uh, okay oh this is the aunt one again my aunt is coming to visit her you answered that one. Oh, i did that one already garden state of mind steve what's up bro what's up garden state of mind can you do long line worth with, with a harness dog? You can. Okay, that's actually a good one. So sometimes what I'll do to throw a dog off, so like a lot of the dogs come in harness and they're a mess on the harness, right? They're pulling and yanking the dog people all over. But even with the harness, their leash pressure is poor, right? So the dog gets pressure and then it pulls them. So sometimes I'll start with the harness of getting them to understand this leash pressure on a tool that they screwed up to give them a different look of that tool. Then I'll go to like a flat collar then I'll come to a slip lead. And this is not all dogs. You know, some dog, if it's a meltdown dog, I might go right to a slip lead because I need control right away. Or there's aggression and I got to deal with that. Um, Yeah, but for the most part, it's one um, where I will start with the dog on that tool, get it to overcome it a little bit there. And then I go to like, like just a flat collar on the neck. Then I might go to the slip lead or whatever, halty, gentle lead or whatever from that point. Depends on the dog. What's your thoughts about neutering if there's no medical needs? It's a great one. It's a good question. I, listen, what I would say is there's no, from what I've seen, this is again, I don't, I don't get too much into the medical and into all that. I focus on behavior. That's my job. That's what I do, right? But I do know because I'm in this industry. I would say, to give you an example, Nico's one and I haven't neutered him yet. Um, they recommend with this breed, they, like who's they? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so there's no real, like the concrete data, but the theory is that, um, he should be like waiting till about two years. The issue with this freaking guy is that uh, his testicles haven't descended. So it can cause an issue because they're still up inside that I might have to get him removed more er uh, earlier than normal. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not a proponent for the early neutering just because of the, uh, the data that is out there about that, that could, it's not, it's not nothing concrete again from what I've seen, but more of, um, potentially is messing with growth plates and growth and hormones and all that kind of stuff while the dog is developing. So I understand it totally for the population control and the rescue world and shelter. I, I get, totally get it. And I think most people should, uh, should, should do it. It's just when to do it. And there's not to me like the best data on how to do it. So I can just tell you what my plan is for him is I'm going to try to get him to like a year and a half, maybe two, and then do it. That's my Someone plan. Said this, if you don't neuter your dogs, the chance of prostate cancer goes up 75%. Okay. So there you go. That's another one. There's, there's some data. So then, then it's like, but that's just a piece of data, remember. Just so, in case you guys didn't hear that, if you don't neuter your dogs, the chance of prostate cancer goes up 75% after yeah. five to eight years old. Yeah. If you guys didn't hear, I'll read it to them too. If your yeah. dog doesn't... Yeah, <laughs> no. we, anyone else want to read it? Um, if you, you, if you don't neuter your dogs, 
the chance of prostate cancer goes up 75% after five to eight years old. This is coming from many vets. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I said it with I said it with my um, Hispanic accent. Yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. couldn't understand it. Uh, quiet. <laughs> um, that's him again. That tells me this though with him. So just knowing your dog, and okay, this is a good example. Knowing your own dog, it tells me that because he doesn't do this shit this long. Like he won't keep protesting and keep whining. So it tells me that he might be trying to say, "Hey, dude, can someone take me out to the bathroom? I drank all this water after my bike ride and did all this stuff." I ate and you still have me in here. I need to go out. So that might be what he's saying. But if it continues, then we'll, we'll see. And we'll have somebody just take him out. Um, Steve, I appreciate all you do um, and share with us. Thanks, Carrie. Awesome. I want to help you guys as much as I possibly can. Because like, you know what? As a thing too, don't take, don't think it's the wrong way, everybody. But I get a little bit um, in the mode of like, damn, when I was starting in a dog career, what would it have been like to have somebody who had like, a bunch of experience who has worked with like some cool people in the dog world who could have just get like gave me like some free information, some good tips that would really help. And sometimes like these little tips of like, Oh no, no, no. Put the pressure that way. And the people are like, Oh God, what a good tip that was that, that I didn't even think of that to me is just like second nature at this point. So that's why I'm doing this stuff. I really think it's important for you guys to understand because now you're going to go help other people in your area or help your dogs. And then, and then we can start spreading this good energy. It starts moving around. The more people know it in more places, the more countries, the more cities, everything. My three-year-old G- great GSD, this is a German Shepherd dog, has severe hip dysplasia and arthritis. So she can't do a lot of exercise. Do you have, how old? Three, damn. Do you have any ideas on how to challenge? Yeah, you could do scent work things, brain games like that for sure, making them wait for stuff. Hold on one second, guys. Cassie's down there too if you need her to take him out. Yeah, Cassie, do you mind taking him out, please? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. He's just addressing Nico. He might have to go out to the bathroom. We're gonna take him it's out. It's all right now for now, guys. I'll be fine. Yeah, he's getting to be a little. He's being a little. But this is how it goes, by the way. You know what I mean? We don't know. Like he, he's, he might have something, a bathroom thing going on. It might be hot where he is right now. There's some. He might just be being an asshole because we're up here and and Cassie's ignoring him downstairs. Doing the percentage her work of that one else. is pretty high, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's a good percentage. Actually. Yeah, it's a good possibility. He was up here this morning. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Jamie had to let Nico follow him up. Uh, follow her up here this morning while she was messing with the internet. So he was probably up here for a while and was like, this is bullshit. Why don't I get to be up there? Yeah. You know, but because you're not allowed up here right now and the leader said so, that's why. And it's best for you to not become obsessive. So weak-minded Steve, who's a follower, says, oh, poor Nico, come up here and climb on my lap. And then I'm developing a, the, the notorious, anxious, spoiled, aggressive, whining, barking, German Shepherd. Oh, so you mean I shouldn't have let him on the couch this morning? Yeah, exactly. Jamie's probably, yeah. She's like cuddling him. Yeah, yeah right. That's In private. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. God, Thomas. I think that's the name. Um, my Greyhound does that. She gets all pumped up after huge walks and I have to settle her. Yeah, I mean, they do because they come home and sometimes they celebrate coming home too. So we just have to, um, and celebration's okay, but how intense does it get? That's what we have to see. Thank you. I always get great tips to share with my clients in California. What are some tips for teaching settle? Okay. Uh, Kat, the dog trainer. I should not say the names. You got that one? Mm-hmm. Right, you guys are on it. Good. Um, to teaching settle. So what you'll do is, is don't try to go get your dog when they're like revved up running in the yard going crazy and settle them there. You want to do it like you go for a walk or you drain a bunch of the energy. So then when you create the excitement, you want to create a low level. You go, you play like, what do you got? What are you doing? And have a leash on. What's up? And the dog starts, ah, what's up? And then you go, pull up on the leash. Shh. Settle. Shh. And achieve. And then when they do and they're calm, and it might take you five minutes, it might take you 30 minutes. I don't know how long it's going to take for your individual dog. But when the dog calms down, you play again and play again at a low level. So master level one. Bring it down. One, bring it down. One, bring it down. Great. Now you go to level two. Master that. Bring it down. So the goal is to be able to get to 10 where the dog is running in the dog park. You see with me and Nico right in there when he's going crazy, he's chasing a dog, and I go down. And he, boom, right to the ground in a second. That's at level 10. So that's the goal to get them there. But start at the low levels. Yeah, start at a low level. Create a little excitement. 
Settle the dog. But I like using the leash and taking the time. Settle? Good. Because that's also patience and being calm and taking the time to do it. If that makes sense. Um, Brooklyn and Frankie. Suggestion to help a dog who has become extremely fearful of coming out of house. Refuses to walk in suburb environment, but is okay when we are away from it. This has developed over the past few months. Yeah, I've had cases like this over the over the years where the dogs like don't want to leave the house, but it's it's a lot of times like one where they're insecure about leaving home base. So why is a dog dealing with that insecurity and why don't they want to go with you? Are you putting pressure on them to go? Are you trying to chase them out of the house, get the leash on? How's the relationship between you guys? And when you start to go and they hesitate, are you feeling sorry for them? Are you babying them? Or I'm not saying you are. I'm just trying to just see if, if that's possible. Um, those are things that I'll be looking at to see why the dog doesn't want to go. And then sometimes it may mean the dog's just saying, I don't want to go. I'm not just not just refuse to walk in this neighborhood. And then we say, okay, well, we're going to have to get you. You can bring food there, leash pressure stuff. We got to figure out what, what it is. With, we got to understand why, but then, then, then go right to like, what do we need to do about it? You know? So, so not so much time and why we have to understand why, but, but then like go to what we have to do. Sometimes people dig so deep. It's like, I wonder if back like five years ago when she saw that dog, that triggered right, this yeah. thing. And like, you know, maybe uh, it could be. And then, okay, fine. It was. Now what? Yeah. So what you are you going to do? You still got to deal with it. Right. You know what I mean? After that. Yeah. I just want to give you the, the time. Um, heads up. It's one, it's one o'clock. I mean, one o'clock, one hour in. Okay. We'll do a few more then, I guess. Right. Yeah. What, however you feel. If your dog is fulfilled with structured exercise, mental training, and he barks in the crate. Uh, that could be related to separation anxiety then. So they might be fulfilled and tired and all that stuff, but still have an anxiety thing. So that may be something um, with how you're putting the dog in the crate. Are they feeling trapped in there? So are you letting the dog go in and settle down and then you close the thing? Um, how are you leaving the home? Are you saying, bye, see you later? Or are you saying, Shh, and then you're walking away? That's what I'm doing to him down there. Um, there's a lot of different factors in that of why he would be barking the crate. And sometimes you need it where the dog, believe it or not, there are dogs that will whine in the crate and the humans come back to address the dog and say, hey, enough. But the dog's like, I don't care. You can address me and be pissed at me. I just want you back because I'm having a meltdown without you here. So then I'm assessing, are they spending too much time in the house together? Is there too much an in intimate space? And then sometimes you may need something like to, to like a vibrate or something when the dog's away in the kennel when they start having, and it's not for punishment this is what people don't understand. It's for when the dog gets stuck. So dogs get stuck in certain, in certain mindsets, right? So the human leaves and they, uh, 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 uh. it's like just saying like, are they, are they bark, 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 bark. And they get stuck. Right. So in that moment, that's like bark, bark, bark. We're watching on the camera and we go bark. And then they turn around. So you're not allowing the anxiety to finish. So if you think about it from a neurological pathway, right? Dog is here. Human leaving. Leaves, which is the stimulus. And then we get to what the dog does, which is then then whines like crazy, uh, barks in its kennel and tries to get out. But if we can go to human left, the whole thing. First of all, we got to make sure this part's correct, the human leaving. And then once that's done correctly, if the dog continues doing the barking and all that stuff, then while it starts practicing, it's like, I'm going to go into my anxiety. I, I, for some reason, I can't focus. The anxiety can't focus anymore. It's like a roadway, the, the neurological pathway. And if they practice it a lot, it becomes like a freaking highway, super highway. It's wide open. It's so easy to go. But all of a sudden, what the goal is with like a vibrate in that moment is like, it's a super highway. You're driving and then up ahead, boom, a tree just landed in the road. Breaks. I need to go an alternate route. So that's like kind of what the goal is with that stuff. Um, I watched it reach. I watched. Uh, this is the adventures of Casper and Hazel. Cool. Uh, I I watched a recent live last week and noticed Nico's come and let's go. How do you train obedience recalls? That's a video I'm gonna do. I'll do it for you guys because it's gonna take a while to explain that. But I start through the nose, through the nose. I wave a sense. But when he was a, just so you know, when he was a puppy, he would be like right. You're the you're Nico. I would come with a sense right by his nose, and he would go. And smell that and start coming towards me. And as I would back away from him and he was coming to me. And once he got, I would say, Nico, come while he was coming to me. And then pay him when he got to me. And then for let's goes, I would do the same scent thing. And then I'd have him walk next to me. And i go, let's go. And he would come with me. Good boy. Pay. Right away. And then that just expanded. We started at a very low level, little stuff. And then over the last year, we just got it to a very deep level. We'll do... Um, 
Any 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 um, humdingers in there? Questions? No. Let's see. There's a lot of questions here. So we didn't end up using those videos that you prepped. Yeah. Would you like to see any of that? We could do, why don't we go to those? Like, and maybe, Jamie, if you could save all these questions somehow. Okay, yes. okay good. All right, guys, I'm going to hold off on answering any more questions. Um, and we'll... Uh-oh, pause due to poor connection. Perfect. Okay. Perfect timing. Going, the, the thing is going okay now. <laughs> Perfect timing. Oh, here, we got a good one. What? My daughter said you sound like Joe Rogan. Oh, my God. Uh, Steve, Steve does have your podcast. Check it out. Whatever it was, this thing go like, can you tell, Joe Rogan can you tell that person to stop lying, please? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's good. I like that. We're, we're trying to bring, you know, actually, who hopefully had a, it's because of the authenticity. You know, who I, had a good voice? Who? Your dad. He did. Yeah. You, you, Cause I'm an audio engineer, so I can hear maybe, maybe like, maybe it's because today I'm like, I'm like a little bit like, lower. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm just yes. like, all right, we're just doing this. I'm not as like, yeah, that's true. Like, you're, you're pretty too. calm. Like talking on the, on yeah, the mic right now too. That's good. Yeah, that's true. Um, did you want to show any of these videos or no? Yeah, I can. Absolutely. Okay. Do you so want to, we let, do you yeah. have, um, all the, uh, we have everything questions. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you. Instagram. I hope you guys are enjoying this stuff. We will see you guys soon. I'm going to do way more lives, way more stuff like this for you guys. Straight to the point. Let's get these questions going. Get you guys clear on what you should be doing with your dog, living life to the fullest, living in a full life, highest vibration. Go out there and kill it. All right. And watch the podcast. Watch the podcast. When, when is this air? On Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday, 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Eastern. So check it out. You'll see that you see any of your questions answered in there. All right? Thank you, guys. Love you guys. Talk to you guys later. Okay. Cool. Download the video, maybe? Sure, yeah. We're back, podcast people. Okay. But are they going to be able to see this up here? Yeah, we'll be able to do that. I'm just going to do like a little bit of a reset here. Okay. Or we don't have what to. Do you, do you want to just end it on this one? For yeah, we can absolutely do that. We can absolutely Because I would like to go over. There's actually some videos that we found. Um, all right. Actually, why don't we do this? Because if, you, if, you've, if you've watched long enough to, to be here now with this, send me any videos you have of, of uh, like incidents with dogs that have happened so we can break them down. I want to get into the incident uh, like, like a bite happened, a dog ran away. Um, you know, there was an attack or something happened that we could see if there was any prevention or, or we can study the language of the dog or what they're doing and that kind of stuff. I think that's a, uh, so if you watch this long, feel free to send us a message or send it to my, to, to the Instagram, to the Facebook, um, in the comments anywhere. Um, we, it was, I guess they can't do the video in the comments, but DM would be the best way. Yeah. You can also, um, there's an app called WeTransfer. If you get, it's a bigger file, yeah. and you can just email it to info at Pack Your Dogs. Okay, so for WeTransfer, there's a, a site WeTransfer. If you look it up, and that's one where you can upload a video there and then send it to us that way. Yep, and we'll put and, that. And by the way, and they could, but they can send in YouTube links. If there's a YouTube link video, we can put that up there too. That as well. We yeah, if you comment in YouTube, yeah, you will be able to leave the, the link to another YouTube video yeah. on there, and we'll be able to That'd extract it. So there. let's do that. Like, if you guys want to send any videos of some incidents and stuff, because I found a f couple from like you know, uh, it's a it's a, a rescue who comes on, and this is our rescue dog, and this and that, and all of a sudden it's like the dog growling, and like people are like, what the hell? They're so confused, and I don't know what happened here, and it's like, uh, I'm watching it the whole time, like, oh my god, this, this, this one, one by so the way, bad right now. This, this one by the way was it's not a big it's not a big deal. We can actually just show this one real quick if you like, because you. There's no there's no audio to this one, but you can actually explain what the situ situation is. Around already, like he's already like, what is happening? That was a thing right there. He's the way he went, like he went, like he went, like like that. Yeah. Like, get off me a little bit. He's he's very uncomfortable this dog. And people say he looks good. Look, he's avoid. This is avoidance. He's trying to avoid the lady. He hears shit going on over here. This is all okay. That was stressful yawn there for sure. I hope you guys can hear this. What I'm saying. Yeah, pull that. Yeah. <laughs> Carter, I want to be loved. <laughs> this is what fucking people are doing in the rescue yeah. world. Is like he just wants love, and then they did. Then they, the, the the person goes, "Okay, I got. I I can go give Carter love." So you've seen signs there already that he's not that comfortable. Numerous. This guy's petting him in his lap the whole fucking time, and he's a little stressed. Right. Right there, he almost wants to get away. You can see that. Some more petting. Pat, 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 pat. He, he thinks he the guy was petting. Yes. You said that last time. That's why he's not reacting the way he does. But let's say. Oh, I realized it. That's a different touch. I felt nails. 
Huh? That he just realized. Yes. He said, oh, you were just touching me that whole time? Yep. He's, he's tired of getting pet, by the way. You can tell. Yeah, for sure. Asking. People stop trying to look. Right there. Holy fuck. And like, he's they moving. don't see that shit. I know. Nobody noticed that then? Like right there, he's saying, leave me alone. He got away with it. And look, look at how he sh- shifted. And said, he's oh, trying okay. to, yeah. I can claim my face. And the guy's trapping him in there with the legs too. Huh? The guy's trapping yeah, him in there with the trapped, legs. And then the lady's just touching, touching, touching a dog she doesn't know. So. Right. And the dog gave multiple warnings and then has now ramping up what he's, the warnings and correcting the human. Yep. That's and she's another, unsure. That was another huge warning. And even the lady was unsure to pet him right there again. It's like, yeah, you should trust your instincts. It's not a good time to pet. Oh, he's in avoidance. Realizes. That's enough Bam. of that. I told you already. Bam. Yeah. Like, that didn't come from any, from nowhere. So, either. let me explain to you guys. And like, if I cut it, and that's the end of it, right? Oh, my God. I don't know what happened there and all that shit, right? Well, what happened there was the dog was in dog language world, giving a zillion uh, warning signs, things that he was having problems with and issues. And... The humans didn't see it. Right. And then they, they think a dog is just a cuddle bunny pet thing. Just pet him. Rescue dog. I just need love. The rescue's coming and telling that shit, right? And that's what you get. That's what comes from it. That's the, 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 the a dog. Listen, that's not the dog's fault. The dog was trapped in that moment and gave a million warnings of that he was uncomfortable. That handler should have said in that moment, uh, it would be better not to pet him right now. He's new to the scenario. There's a lot going on. And I would put him in a down over here and maybe bring a dog back. You know, just let the dog be. Because they bring them on these news shows. I've been on these shows. I went with Caesar. I've been on these places to these places. Um, I've shot interviews and all that. I mean, there are cameras and movement and noises. Adam, you, that was what you were doing. Like, there's a lot of shit that's going on there that, that can be like, what is this thing, you know, that a dog is like? But remember, a dog biting is, is a form of communication. The, the human world is going to go to what an evil, vicious, terrible dog. We can't adopt it. He shouldn't be adoptable, adoptable but the yeah. dog needs some work too because even being pet. But you can still find like, like the right owner who could like manage that dog and say, all right, when you come over, just please don't pet him and stuff like that. He's going to go to his bed. And that dog was fine. He was fine sitting there. Yeah, he was fine. He was like dealing with the situation. Being tolerant. Was getting, to- like, why, is this, why is this random weak person? In, in, in reality, that not that the girl is weak, but she's just being like excited and being like, ha, ah, this touching. And he can feel it. He can feel that like you're not like an authority, you know, and you're just touching me like you're just invading my space like you like it's no big deal. I like that was that then it finally got first. It started with like the looks, the awkwardness, the looking away. Then I went to well, like one thing. Then it went finally to like I gotta like let her really know. And he was tolerating. Being he was tolerating for the most part, but then he. he, he and then then, then the media back. picks this up yeah. and says Pitbull attacks news reporter. Pitbull, Pitbull, Pitbull all day long. No one blames the fucking human who who screwed that whole thing up. It's not. It's not like listen. It's it's one that she doesn't know. So I'm not trying to shame the person because if she knew dog like you you can. How do you know she doesn't know dogs? Did you see the video? Yeah. Anyone who knows dogs doesn't do that right. at all. Right. You know what? I can tell right away just when people for, know dogs or not. Just for people that were listening to audio only. Yeah. Just to, can you summarize? Oh yeah. What happened so basically, there? it's a video. It's a it's a, a video, um, of uh, it's like a news news setting kind of thing, like an interview news setting thing, where the woman sitting in one chair, guy sitting next to her, the dog's right in between his legs, sitting up. He's petting the dog incessantly the whole time. The dog is panting a little heavy, looking around, a little concerned, unsure, showing avoidance signs. Um. And then finally gets to the point of, of like warning with visual stuff, then actually does like a little snap at the person that nobody saw how, I don't know why. And then finally ends up finishing with a, with a need to correct you and make contact and touch. So that was the touch. And then the, the, the finally the human moved away and the dog felt like finally. Like and by touch, he fixed. kind of snipped at her hand a little bit. Yeah. 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 Like, like put, put a bite on the hand. Mm-hmm. Like not like a bite and hold and grab and shake, just a snap like, boom, Get away correct. from me. Yeah. So to me, I saw a dog correcting a human in that scenario. Mm-hmm. Uh, most people are going to see a vicious white pity who bit somebody. Right. So it's good to see, and it's good to see. It, it's good for people to watch you break it down too, because yeah. people won't see those signs. No, all the no, time. No. That's why I want to show more of those ones, so so none of our our pack is put in position like that. Correct. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So awesome! I, like I, I really enjoyed today's. I've been like, glad, going yeah. going on the lives and stuff and answering these questions, and it's like. How funny is it that like the things that I'm actually not like in quote getting, getting paid, paid for, for in yeah. money, I'm actually enjoy, enjoy it. it. Like I, I there, but I am getting paid in fulfillment. 
You also like spending. Do you time know what I'm saying about you, the dogs though too? Right. You also like spending time with Jamie and I too. So that's the worst there's part about all. There's that, that level to it. That's the only part that sucks. He can't admit it. Guys. That, I, I'm the one that has to say it. Besides that, it would be good. But whatever it is, what it is. And, and cut like, the I podcast. Want, I, but I, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I want I want people to really understand this stuff because like I don't want anyone to be in a position. Oh, like like let me just go to the house and do this stuff. I'm trying to educate, and this is what it's like a dog. You know, like I'm not I don't to fulfill Nico. I don't pay him money. Like he did, but what I pay him with is let's go work, let's go do things, blah, blah, blah. and then that the, the the pay is affection. Yeah. You know, the pay is playing a game. The pay is going for a walk. The pay is this. So fulfillment, doing what you love. When you're doing what you love, is not a job. I don't see this as a job. I see this as something I look forward to doing. Oh, we're doing this thing? Fuck yeah, let's do it. It's going to be awesome. So more of them to come, more lives to come. If you guys notice, I've been doing a bunch of lives. Sometimes I'm just like, eh, fuck it, I'm going to go live. What a, but I, you know, this is part of my own growth too, by the way, is I used to go into a little bit of overthinking. Like, well, what am I going to talk about? Like, what do they want to hear? What do they want to see? Eh, they don't want to see me again. I was on yesterday. Like, I don't want to go do another one. I don't want to bother these people. I don't want to like saturate them with bullshit content and just go on to just go on. But then I go on and all of a sudden I'm like, I can't get off because like, you every- also forget that people are starving for that. I know that knowledge. And, and, and you know what I really think people are starving for is authenticity. That too. It's and rare. You guys know me. I'm not going to yeah. do some bullshit to get like, like, and sign up for our, like, fuck you with that shit. Or like, and then do this and then do that. And let me upsell you. Oh, so did you like this free content now buy our $97? Da, 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 da. Fuck you. I shouldn't say that, but you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's more of like, I see it and I'm like, what? You're selling that shit? Fuck. All right. Like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> but by the way, people, I said it last time, I'm downloading all of them. I buy them. I check them all out and I'm doing, I'm doing R and D research and development. Yeah. Right. I'm seeing what are people doing? What are they saying? What are they charging for? So if I see what you're charging for, I know what you, what, <laughs> what you're charging for in your sessions and all that, that I'm like, I just don't want people. I'm, I'm tired of people being ripped off. I think that's the biggest thing in this industry. And the dog industry is notorious for ripping people off. And that's the part that it really bothers me is like, you know, again, I had the girl who came with this dog who was like a serious case. And she told me that they brought the dog to a, a, a very well-known board and train place in this area, in the New York city area. They have a location in New York and in New Jersey. They brought the dog to the place she said that the, the, the person came out and with a leash like this and came right to the dog and he lost it. So they don't even know that shit. Then he lost it. They get him on leash. They kind of drag him inside. They call her back by the end of the day and say, come pick up your dog. We don't think he's going to do well with us. And by the way, no refunds. That's incredible. So I had to ask her. I flat out. I said, can I ask you something? I said, is there, and, the, and is there, there a reason horror stories, stories, the heart, like I, I saw, I told her yesterday, I said, I said, listen, I'm, I, I feel terrible that you went through this and all that, but I could write a book for the stories that I've heard about this. Yeah, like I'm sure. actually laughing. So I mean, I should be laughing, but I'm like, I'm like, these sessions come in and like, I can't, they're like, so we went to this trainer and then they, and it's literally the same exact thing every yeah. time. And they came right with food and we started just doing treats, but I didn't feel like it was whatever. And you know what all that shit is, by the way, is the people saying it didn't feel like whatever their instincts are telling them, mm-hmm. I don't know if this is right. And people, ex- it feels not correct. People ignore their instincts all the time. Of course. And they, and that, that, that's, that's what everyone's doing all over the world. And that was yesterday, that session. Uh, yeah. Cause that was like thing. not that long ago, two weeks ago that we heard the same exact thing. Yeah. Numerous things. It's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's never ending. It's all the ones that I'm like, and me, for me, it's not because like, I'm like, this is bullshit. I should get all the ones. I'm like, no, I want them to not spend money and go to the right person once, yeah. whether it's me or whoever, I don't care. I just want people to like be able to get the information the correct way once and not get shitty information, pay for it, spend the money. And then we have to redo what that person fucked up. Right. That's the other thing that sucks about this industry too is like how everyone knows everything and everyone's selling a program and everyone's got it figured out and everyone knows, everyone knows and their way is the only way and this and that. I don't believe in that shit. I think there's a zillion ways to do it with dogs. There's a foundation, but there's mother nature's way, which is the way. I think if you came into a lot of situations being like, we really don't know shit. We're wanting to learn as much as possible, but we really don't know anything. I think people will be more receptive to that. Um, How about this? I, I said yesterday in the live, well, everybody else is, they learned, they read a book, they worked with a few dogs, they learned how to use the e-collar a little bit, they did some stuff, and now they're selling programs and charging people a pretty penny for their expertise. Right now, I'm signed up in another course with a sport dog trainer, a very well-known sport dog trainer, to learn about sport dog training. Yeah. 
to, to keep growing and keep getting better. I want to learn something else. Instead of me saying, sitting here and saying, well, the sport dog trainers, what they, what they're missing is the, and I don't believe, no, let me go see what the deal is. Let me grow and learn more. And by the way, do you see how many programs am I selling out there? I don't yeah. sell them. Yeah. I'm giving them this shit away for free because I think it's important for people to get the information. You know, that's it. Is this the way I see it? Like as much, as much knowledge as you actually have in this dog world, you're still wanting to learn more. More. Which is almost like, yeah, you really don't know as it, much. It, it should never stop. Learning. Yeah. Learning never it's stops. Infinite. Like I, I, I foresee myself being 86 and talking to somebody about like, and what about that dog? Did you, and you tried this and tried Actually, that. you know when learning stops is when you're like, I know everything. Yeah, that's, that's the, technically and when the ego takes over. Correct. Yeah. I know my way, my yeah. thing. It can't be. Therefore, it's not like mm-hmm. all those things. Like, okay, when you start, that's all limiting beliefs, by the way, too. You know, like, I guess it's not so much limiting, but it, 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 it the result is a limit because you're like, right. I know everything. You cut yourself off from the yeah. best of learning. So, but it is a limiting belief because yeah. you're saying this is the limit of what can be learned mm-hmm. and known. No, there's like forever. Like your life should be. And by the way, if you're not growing, you're dying. And all the thing about life is just progress. So if you can progress a little bit in one area of life from yesterday to today or the last hour to this hour, focus on that because we're focused goes energy flows. Okay. Go do that shit, people. Anyway, really good one. I really enjoyed today. So we'll let you guys go. I'll let you go. Yeah, thanks. I buddy. hate when people say that to me on the phone. Okay, we'll I'm going to let, let you go. go. Yeah, that like, was, I can fucking hang up when I want. Okay? I know, that was you like guys the worst can leave thing. when you want. Don't feel like you have to stay me here. Me too. Huh? My dad will call me. Like, all right, let you go. I'll let you go now. Yeah, I'm like, you I'll let me? you go. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm going to let you go. Yeah, well, I called okay? you, so I'm going to let you go now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Um, we'll be here next week for another one. Who knows what we're going to throw at you next week, but a pack leader experience is coming. We've been talking about it for a long time. But... Most likely a team member will be joining us. Okay. Yeah. For Ask a Pack Leader? Ask a Pack Leader. Oh, good. We're going to bring one of the team members on one of the trainers? Yes. Yeah? Okay. And then probably that same week, we're probably going to do uh, the experience. The pack leader experience. We'll do some, we have some cool people on the weekend, up for probably. That. And I think like people will enjoy me like talking to these people and like, yeah. like it's the, a different you too. Cause you're, you've had Jamie on, you've had people yeah. on, but it's like having more a, of an interviewing them. Yes. And like, what did you, what got you started in your industry? And when, and at what point did you think that you, you were, did you ever consider quitting and did you ever feel down? And knowing Steve, it? you're always going to relate it to the dog stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring it right back oh, in. Oh my God. I can't wait. Thanks. These are all buddy. people that I've worked with, you know, with their, yeah. well, not all, but most much, of them, yeah. most of them are people that I've worked with, with their dogs. And I want to see like what they got out of it. Yeah. Like anything you learned with the dog psychology that has now helped you be the number one DJ or helped you. And you by know, the way, what a great or, testimonial to get too yeah, at yeah, the yeah. same time. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's awesome. true. Good point. Yeah. That's what we have Adam. Oh yeah. Love you guys. Good ideas. Uh, stay calm and confident and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Have guys. an awesome week. That was good.